And in fact, compost, when it's so-called finished, will decompose for about another five years. Black yeah, stuff is mostly apples and bananas still, even it's, though it's black it's stuff. It's still apples and bananas, right? <laughs> it's, it's not compost. So, uh, Robert, why don't you tell us, um, what is organic matter? I mean, a lot of us know what it is to some extent, but maybe there's a lot of things we don't know. What is it? Why, why is it important? And, you know, can you have too much? If it's good, can't we just keep adding it? Won't it get better sort of thing? Well, I think many gardeners actually don't know what organic matter is. I mean, they have a concept of what it is, right? It's, it's basically stuff that comes from plants. Um, and that's true. But we don't actually have a really good understanding of organic matter. And um, another term that's thrown a lot around a lot is called humus. So humus, we recognize as something that's good for soil. Uh, it's, it's that black stuff that's in the forest. So we want it in our own gardens. And interestingly, it, it turns out we've been studying humus for a couple hundred years. And we still don't actually know what it is, which to me was a real surprise when I first looked into it. And it, it turns out that although we can study it, Every time we bring it in the lab and, and do tests on it, we alter it. And once it's altered, then we're actually studying something different. Right. So as of right now, we, we actually don't really understand what humus is, but it has given me some insights into how the soil works. And I think that's why it's important to understand this humus. We think of organic matter as starting big. So tomato, pepper, banana peel, some uh, fall leaves, we put that in a pile, we turn it around and slowly it goes black and rots. And at some point we look at it and say, okay, it, it's no longer an apple, it's no longer a banana peel. And we call that finished compost. Well, it turns out it's not finished. In fact, it's, it's just starting. But the thing we don't realize is that our eyes aren't very good. So when we look <laughs> at it, we don't see a banana peel. But if we took out a microscope and looked at it, we'd see that most of that banana is still there. And in fact, compost, when it's so-called finished, will decompose for about another five years. So that, now, that, yeah, actually, that black yeah, so stuff is mostly apples and bananas still, even though it's black it's stuff. It's still apples and bananas, right? It's, <laughs> it's not compost. Now, it's, it is degraded to a certain extent, but it, it's not finished yet. Uh, if we drill down, we see bits of apple and banana. And uh, it depends on your soil type and your climate and so on, but approximately five years. And during that time, that material slowly degrades farther and farther and farther. And the reason it degrades is because of the microbes. So the microbes, mostly bacteria and fungi, they come along and they eat those little pieces and slowly digest that. And as they're doing that, they release nutrients. So the nutrients in that apple we put into the compost pile is actually feeding our soil for about five years. And a little bit comes out every year, slowly, year after year. And that's one of the main values of organic matter is that when we put it in our gardens, it's a slow release fertilizer compared to synthetic fertilizer where we put it in our gardens and instantly it's it's pretty much gone it's dissolves in water it's available the plants can use it and and that's the end of the story i mean it's it's there until it runs away or something uses it up but organic matter just releases this really slowly the other thing that a lot of people don't really realize is that at some point this stuff stops degrading like i said it gets smaller and smaller and we degrade these molecules smaller and smaller but that's not really true either if you think about it here's this bacteria and it gobbles up a piece of apple and digests it well now we have a bacteria and that bacteria is full of organic matter and it doesn't live very long so then it dies and it becomes more organic matter but it's large molecules again. So we've taken this process and sort of backed it up a bit. So the apple is smaller and smaller, but then a bacteria eats it. And then that becomes a big piece of organic matter again. 
And in the soil, what's happening is that this bacterial growth and the fungi growth and the organic matter that we added keeps cycling around. And all this life keeps turning around and around and around. And that's really the value of that organic matter. It's, it's not the stuff we actually put in, but the fact that we grow organic matter in the soil. We're actually harvesting these bacteria and fungi. We're, we're growing them and multiplying them. And that's the real value of organic matter. Right. It's so you're, you're sort of like you're facilitating nutrient exchange and nutrient release and a cycle of all of that. That's right. And that's the real secret. And I, I think most gardening circles don't really talk about that, but that's the real value. And uh, we'll come back to that later on when we talk about the rhizosphere, because that's, yes. that's critical at that point. Um, that's one value of organic matter. The second value is that it adds carbon to the soil. Okay. And one of the things that we've been doing with our agriculture is we slowly release the carbon that was in the soil and it's slowly being churned into CO2 and we're losing it from the soil. And it's that loss of organic matter from the soil that makes the soil less fertile. And over time, we have to add more and more fertilizer to get growth out of that soil. And it's the loss of organic matter that's really causing us the problem. So we want to do everything we can to put that back into the soil and increase the levels. Mm -hmm. And now farmers are doing that now with a lot of no-till uh, farming. So tilling adds oxygen to the soil and releases CO2. It speeds up the decomposition of that organic matter. If you don't till your soil, you slow that down and you can now build up the organic level. Mm. Uh, gardeners like to mulch with something, uh, compost, manure, wood chips, whatever you've got, you put it on top, that adds carbon and organic matter to the soil. So over time, we want to increase that organic matter. That's what makes good soil. Right. But now the question becomes is, can we have too much? And many people think, no, no, I mean, organic matter is great for soil, it's great for plants, so put lots in. And that's a, becoming a problem in some places. So people make these raised beds and they fill them full of compost and manure. And there's no soil in there anymore. It's just all good stuff. Well, that's a problem. You have too much good stuff. Now, again, uh, it's hard to understand why that's a problem um, unless you spend some time looking at the nutrients. But just to simplify this, I'll look at two of our nutrients, nitrogen and phosphate. When we put nitrogen phosphate on our soil, uh, the nitrogen dissolves very easily in water and it runs through the soil fairly quickly. In fact, after a rain, you have a lot less nitrogen than you had the day before. Phosphate, on the other hand, tends to stick to soil and moves very, very slowly through soil. So I put on this compost this year, the nitrogen leaches away, the phosphate stays behind. Next year, I put some more on. Same thing happens. Nitrogen runs away, phosphate stays behind. This happens every year. So I'm slowly building up my phosphate level, but not my nitrogen level. And I get to a point where even though I'm adding good stuff that are compost and manure, I now have a really high level of phosphate. And what that does is several things. One is it stops mycorrhizal fungi from living near our roots, which our plants really want. Uh, the other thing it does, it actually inhibits certain minerals. So plants now have a hard time picking up other minerals. So you see mineral deficiencies in the plants, not because you don't have enough minerals there, but because you have too much phosphate. Right. So phosphate is harming that soil. And you can't do much about it because phosphate doesn't dissolve in water very much. It doesn't move through the soil profile. Once you have it, it takes years and years and years to get rid of it. So what we're finding now is that a lot of newer gardens, those made with lots of compost, actually are quite toxic to plants. <laughs> and the first few years, stuff grows like crazy. And then 
A few years later, they start having problems and the, the tomatoes aren't growing so well and the cabbage can't grow and so on. When they test their soil, the test results come back and say, well, you have ridiculously high amounts of phosphate. It's no wonder you can't grow anything in there. And we really can't get rid of that. We have to sort of replace the soil then. Right? Mm -hmm. So you can have too much organic matter. It's not the carbon that's the problem, but it's that the nutrients out of that material. Right. So soil normally has about 5% organic matter, which is quite low. And, and that's ideal soil. That's the good stuff. Uh, the stuff most people have around their homes is probably more like 2 or 3%. And if you're on very sandy soil, it's even lower than that. So you could be at 1% or 2% in sandy soil. So you want to get it up a couple percent, but we don't want 20% organic matter. We, we want about 5%, and that's lots. So what I recommend that people do is they, they just mulch every year. An inch of compost is not going to be too much. You put a little bit on every year and don't overdo it. Right. Now, the exception to that might be a, a new garden that you're building, right? So you first time gardener and you, you get rid of your lawn and now you got this really crappy soil that the builder left behind has zero organic matter. That's different. You can put in six inches and dig it in and, and get yourself started. But after that, just put on a little bit, one of your characters.